Afternoon, everybody. Andrew here from The Analog Addicts. Uh, I am here today to tell you a little bit about a microphone that is very misunderstood. Uh, everybody that I've known that's used this microphone has used it in kind of a different way than I usually do. Uh, so, okay, so what the microphone is, I've got a Sterling Audio pencil style condenser. This is an ST33. Um, and pencil style condenser is just like a top address. So through the little tippy top right up here, that's where it captures sound. Uh, but it is not a small diaphragm condenser. This is actually a medium diaphragm condenser. And I want to get into why that matters, uh, as well as one of the reasons why I use it a little bit differently than most other pencil style condenser microphones. And I also want to give you like a ton and a half of audio examples. If you want to skip to the audio examples, that is totally fine. You are going to miss all the fun, but I will put all the timestamps down below so that you can hear it yourself, make your own decisions as to what this microphone is and whether or not it's worthwhile for you. So let's jump in. So despite what you may have been told, the size of the capsule inside of the condenser microphone does not actually directly reference how much low end or top end that the microphone captures. This is a common misconception I see with people who are kind of newer to the recording game. So just because you have a pencil style condenser that is oftentimes used for things like cymbals, piano, uh, acoustic guitar, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's all about the high frequencies. Yes, they do tend to capture amazing detail on the top end, but they can also extend pretty pretty far onto the low end. I mean, case in point, Octava MK012. Okay, I'm getting off track. So uh, basically what these condenser sizes are mostly known for is how much detail and like what I call like realism that the microphones pick up. So for the best example of this is like, say you've got drum cymbals and you want to figure out what overhead mics you want to use so if you've got some harsh cymbals or if you've got an acoustic guitar that has some dead strings or like a super buzzy fret or if the hammers on a piano are really worn down and kind of flattened out if you use a small diaphragm pencil style condenser you will hear all of those things and it will capture all of those things that you did not really necessarily want to hear in great, exceptional, excruciating detail. However, the opposite end of the spectrum is also true. So where a large diaphragm condenser might smooth out some of the harshness of the cymbals, it may actually bring out some of the musical top end on the dead strings on the guitar or, or you know, what have you. If you've got some really nice symbols, like if you got some K customs or some, oh gosh, I don't know, what are people using these days? Minel custom dry symbols, whatever it is, and you're just in love with that symbol sound, you use that large diaphragm condenser and it changes a lot of the character of those symbols. Um, it doesn't capture a lot of what they're what makes them so beautiful same thing with the guitar if you've got a guitar that's got a, a brand new setup and it's got some good strings on it it's going to kind of cover up some of that detail especially on the top end because the top end tends to just smooth off and kind of turn into like i don't know i, I don't want to call it false it's it's its own thing but i'm getting like way off the off the track here but nonetheless so this Medium diaphragm. Okay, so you use small diaphragm to capture more detail. You use large diaphragm to kind of smooth out and make it more musical. So what is medium diaphragm? It's just in between. So medium diaphragm still captures a tremendous amount of detail. It's got all the transients. It captures a very natural sound, but it's still got in its own little flavor of like special sauce that you can kind of use to your advantage. So uh, what I've kind of discovered is like, it does a lot of the pencil condenser type of stuff really well, like drum overheads. Let's listen to drum overheads.
decent. Yeah, they sound good. They're not bad drum overheads or uh, acoustic guitar. So acoustic guitar, it uh, I, I love the mid forward flavor that it gives you on acoustic guitar. So I don't have an acoustic guitar right now. As you can see, I'm still rebuilding my studio. Um, so I don't have an acoustic guitar right now, but I do have an, uh, a recording that I used this exact microphone in like a stereo pair situation. Uh, and I recorded it uh, years ago, but it was like a 1990s Yamaha. I'm sure it was just like an FG. It wasn't even an, uh, an electric acoustic, but it was just like a cheap 90s Yamaha with like older strings, but it kind of had this really cool sound to it. This microphone was my favorite choice out of everything. So let's listen to that. They do a pretty good job for a lot of your standard pencil condenser, small diaphragm microphone type of stuff that you would expect. But again, these are medium diaphragms, so it's a little different. But this is not why I own these. I, I actually use different microphones for overheads most of the time now. Uh, and I typically don't mic up an acoustic guitar with these uh, unless it just absolutely calls for it. There's occasions where I will, but it's, it's pretty rare. I actually have other microphones that I prefer for those jobs. But there is this weird mojo secret code, I feel like, that I've discovered. It's like a cheat code in a video game where if you use that microphone in the place of where you typically use an SM57, um, it can really shine. And it, that is so surprising to me. So like guitar amps, snare drum, a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, so what I've done is I've actually recorded uh, a guitar amp with the ST33 and an SM57 at the same time. And what I've ended up doing is I, I'm going to let you A, B between the two of them. So I'm going to give you a phrase and then another phrase and then a phrase and then a phrase. And then at the very end, I'm going to blend both of those microphones together, which to me, that is kind of the, the powerhouse of all of this it is like because... I'm just going to let you hear it. Right? That's kind of crazy. So it's like the ST33 is a lot like the SM57. It just kind of extends the high end and the low end a little bit, but it also has just this interesting little sparkly spank kind of thing that happens on the tippy top end of everything. So like I've noticed that like when I record like super heavy, like heavily distorted, heavily overdriven guitars that are uh, like maybe even like scooped out a little bit, I'll use that setup almost entirely 100% of the time. I, I can't think of a session where I haven't used that and it hasn't just exceeded expectations. Uh, and I actually even discovered this kind of accidentally. This is kind of the cheat code part. Like I feel like I accidentally found out a cheat code because I was, I was working on a session and we were using SM57s, but they wanted to track everything live. And so I was using SM57s on the snare and the toms and the other two guitar amps and I didn't have any more. I didn't have six SM57s at the time, so I did have this, and I wasn't using it because I didn't have any acoustic instruments that I was recording. And I was like, you know what? We're just going to see if it works. And I threw it in front of the speaker, kind of in the exact same placement that I use an SM57, and I was 
blown away at how like usable it was. And then I got into the mix and I was like, holy crap, you can actually manipulate the sound of this thing to sound really good and just kind of like another layer. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to try. And the, the trick is you have to like line up the capsules in this microphone. So it, it'll look kind of like this, uh, where it's the SM57 is just a little further forward than the SC33. But if you can get those capsules lined up right, you won't have that phase cancellation and you can blend those two microphones together. Man, that thing really starts singing. Um, so uh, I also want to talk about snare drum. Hell, I don't want to talk about it. Just let's listen. Right. I mean, it's it's remarkable the similarities that this microphone has with an SM57, but yet it's got its own flavor at the same time. Like, it's a shame that this microphone flew under the radar because, I mean, I'll be honest with you, Sterling Audio um, kind of messed up their business plan. So, like, Sterling Audio in, like, the early 2000s, they started putting out microphones that look like the old groove tube mics. And I've used the old groove tube mics. I've used a GT55. I think it was one of my first condensers I ever bought. And I've even used like, oh, what was it? The GT33. Anyways, so like the, they pretty much made these little carbon copies of them. But the other thing that they did is like, because groove tube stuff was always pretty good for the price. But like the Sterling Audio stuff, they kind of wanted to release like beginner level and then they wanted intermediate level, like, and then kind of the prosumer level. And that's kind of like what they were focused on, but no one was interested in their medium level mics or their prosumer level of microphones. Whoops. Um, because they all looked the exact same and we are creatures that shop with our eyes. And so like you would look at it and you're like, okay, I've got an SD 31 and that costs like a hundred and, I think it was like 129 or it might have even been a hundred bucks. It might've been 99, 99. Uh, or I could go and spend $500 on the ST 33, but they look the exact same. They both say FET. I don't know. Mm, I'm just going to get the 99, 99 one. But the problem was ST 31 did not sound very good. It was very brittle. It sounded harsh on a lot of things. It, it picked up a lot of the stuff that you just don't really like hearing, but the ST 33, the components were much better. I, I don't know if it's the same circuit or not. It's kind of out of my expertise, but like it felt like it was an entirely different microphone. It felt like the other one was a toy that came with like a karaoke machine. And then this one was a pro level mic, which is actually the case, but no one bought the SD 33 because everybody that bought the SD 31 just assumed that it was all just kind of meh, like kind of low end stuff, but it wasn't crazy. Okay, so history lesson aside, um, so you know when you get like a brand new microphone and you just kind of want to like put it through its paces? I don't know if anybody else does this. So like I got this microphone and it came in its fancy case with its like foam and its pad and its little lockbox and stuff. And I was like, I'm going to record everything I can with it. So today on this outro, I'm going to leave you with a song that I recorded years and years and years ago when I was into, I was going through a phase where I was like super into the Beatles and like chamber pop and like glam, you know, as you do when you're a young man. And um, so I, I put this microphone in front of a ukulele. I was like, oh, that sounds pretty good. Okay, I like it. And then I, I threw it on some drum overheads and, and then I started building on top of that with an acoustic guitar and then uh, melodica, melodica which is that thing where it's like you have a hose that you blow into and then you use a keyboard down here and it kind of sounds like a harmonica, but it's kind of its own thing. So I recorded it with that. Um, God, what else? Oh, trumpet. I recorded a trumpet part with it. 
Uh, out of all the things that I recorded with this microphone, that's probably my least favorite thing that was recorded. But it still did a pretty good job at all of those things. So uh, I'll leave you with the track. Enjoy it. Uh, and hey, thanks for watching the video. I legitimately appreciate it. Uh, if you don't mind like commenting, let me know your thoughts. I really want to open up the discussion for a lot of these microphones to just fly under the radar. Uh, have you ever owned an ST33? What, are you, what did you use it for? Um, anyways, so yeah, like, comment, subscribe. You know how it goes. I appreciate you. I thank you very much. Enjoy the Young Man Andrew track.